Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my January wrap up for you. I'm just hoping to film a few videos really quickly today so I haven't set my lights up and I'm just going with it. I'm going to do this very similarly to how I did my December wrap up. I'm just going to race through the stats really quickly and then give a very quick list of the books that I read. I'm not going to go into loads of detail because I just kind of want this to be quite a short, quite a quick video and it's been a while since I read some of these books so I don't necessarily remember a lot of detail about them. Let's just get into it shall we? I read a total of 10 books in January. That was from 10 different authors, I say that, but two of the books were collections of works from different authors, so it's actually quite a lot of authors, but 10 main authors I guess I'd say. Because I was home for some of January, I didn't bring back the books I'd finished with me, so I don't have all of them, but I'll put in pictures for the ones I don't have. So the longest book that I read was Black and British Forgotten History by David Olusoga, and this was 602 pages. And the shortest book that I read was called Desires Become Demons, which was a collection of poetry from four different Tamil poets and that was 66 pages so it was a very short book. I read two books that were over 500 pages and the rest were all under 500 pages so I earned myself £12 for my reading in January which has been added to my account. In January I bought two books which are here somewhere. <laughs> The first one that I bought was The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. This was because I read Bear and the Nightingale in December and really enjoyed it so I wanted to carry on the series. I haven't actually got around to reading this yet but I bought that one and then I also bought which I'm not going to show you because it's at the bottom of a stack of books I haven't managed to put on my shelf yet. I bought Cocaine Blues by Kerry Greenwood which is the first book in the Phryne Fisher murder mystery series. So this is a book series that has been made into a TV show. It's about an Australian lady detective in the 1920s and the show was on Netflix and I really enjoyed it and they've now taken it down so I thought I might as well start reading the book. So that's the first book in that series. The Girl in Tower was £7.10 and Cocaine Blues was £6.79. So at the end of January, because I didn't buy anything in December, at the end of January I had £16.79 in my account. Um, that has since depleted quite a lot in February, but never mind. Right, the book that I read that was published the earliest was Risky Business by Nora Roberts. And the one that was published most recently was actually literally published a week ago and that was A Rhythm of Prayer edited by Sarah Bessie and I actually I had this as an e-arc from NetGalley but I enjoyed it so much that I ended up buying myself a copy once it came out. I gave two books three stars, three books four stars and five book five stars so that was a very successful reading month in that sense and um, really enjoyed a lot of those books. The book that I read the quickest was The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Chaper and Annie Barrows and that took me two days to read and the book that took me the longest to read was An Autobiography by Agatha Christie which took me 139 days to read. So that gave me an average reading length of all of the books of 35 days which isn't too bad, I'm um, just over a month and um, that's a mo much healthier start than the last couple of months have been. I was still finishing off a few books in that month that I'd started a while ago so it was good to get to the end of those. The book that had been on my TBR for the longest was also an autobiography by Agatha Christie which had been on there for 1714 days. <laughs> That's quite a long time. Actually one of the oldest books on my TBR I think. Not that it was on, it wasn't on that list because it had been lent to me by my dad but yeah I'd borrowed it from him at the start of 2016 so nearly five years it took me to <laughs> finish reading that book and then there were quite a few books again that I started reading more or less straight away when I got them um, generally ebooks from the library. I didn't make a TBR for January so none of them were on my TBR. Okay in terms of where the books came from four books were from the library, one book was borrowed from somewhere else from my dad, <laughs> two books were from my own TBR, one book was a reread and two books were NetGalley ARCs. The formats three were ebooks, two were hardbacks and five were paperbacks and then it was a range of genres so I read two Christian non-fiction, one regular non-fiction, one memoir, contemporary science fiction, two historical fiction, a collection of poetry and a mystery romance. One book was for a young adult audience and then the rest were all for an adult audience and there were a mixture of publishers, I think four, I think four were from independent publishers, put it on the screen, I'll confirm that if it's something different. So for author nationalities 
There were four Americans, one Indian American, one Indian, one British Nigerian, one Peruvian, one British, and one was a collection of multiple authors from different nationalities. And then for ethnicities, again, there were four white Americans, one Indian American, one South Asian, one British West African, one Latin American, one white British, and again, one with multiple authors of different ethnicities. There were two books by cisgendered men and the rest were by cisgendered women. Some of them were multiple authors, but they were all fell into that category as far as I can tell. And then for my challenges, so this is the first month reporting on my new challenges. So for my challenges, two books were translated off foreign language, so that was the collection of Tamil poets, Desires Become Demon, and also On Joe by Gustavo Gutierrez, so this was translated from Spanish because he is Peruvian. This book also counted for Read Around the World because I have not read an author from Peru before. I also read two books for review, which was very good, but I didn't manage to read any of the oldest books on my TBR from that list or complete any series in January. I'm also now gonna report my other challenge of trying to get my TBR down. So at the start of the year, my TBR, my owned TBR on Goodreads was at 597, and at the end of January, this had gone down to 594. So it had gone down a little bit, which is pretty good. <laughs> it's not stayed that way in February. So in terms of author diversities, five of the books were from authors of colour, two of the books were from authors from the LGBTQIA plus community, two of the books included authors with a disability, two of the books included authors who have talked about mental illness, and then one book included an author who was neurodiverse. And then for the character diversity, again I hit every marker this month as well, so marginalised ethnicity, LGBTQIA plus disability, mental health and neurodiversity rep. Um, were all represented among these books. So actually in terms of like for the first month of the year I think I've done pretty well. The only thing that I need to work more on I think than I did this month was reading from my own TBR. <laughs> we will make improvements of that I'm sure as the year goes on. Okay so now I'm gonna really quickly race through all of the books that I read and give you a short synopsis. Well maybe not. I'm just gonna go through them really quickly and I will give some thoughts about them but not go into lots of detail because similar to my December wrap up I don't really necessarily remember a lot about them and don't want this to be a massively long video because I have to edit it later and I'm still getting back into a rhythm with that. Okay, so the first book I read in January was Risky Business by Nora Roberts. This was an ebook that I got from the library. This was my first time reading Nora Roberts. I didn't love it. I gave it three stars. It was slightly dated. It was first published in 1986, I think I already mentioned. Yeah, some of the characteristics of the alpha male. <laughs> the, this was a mystery romance story and the alpha male was a bit too alpha for my taste. It felt a little bit dated in places but I've just been hearing so much about how prolific an author Nora Roberts is and so I wanted to give some of her books a try and this one just happened to be available on the Libby app from my library. So I read it, it was all right. I will probably read some of her books again but I don't think she's gonna ever become like a fav favourite author where I have to buy everything that she writes. The next book that I read was When Dimple Met Ricci by Sandaya Menon. I gave this four stars, I really enjoyed this. It was just exactly what I needed at the time, just quite a uh, light YA contemporary, really likeable protagonists. I really enjoyed the whole setting of the digital programming summer school thing that they go to and the setup of Dimple not wanting an arranged marriage and Rishi. Oh, the, the whole scene where they first meet just had me in stitches. I thought it was so clever. It's really nice and I'm looking forward to reading more from the series. Probably we'll wait until the library's reopen because I got this one from the library and um, I intend to get the others. And maybe we'll buy them at some point. I enjoyed it enough that I probably would reread them again but I want to see how the rest of the series plays out before I make a decision about buying them. They're not top of my list to buy but enjoyable enough that I want to keep reading. Next I read Under a Gilded Moon by Joy Jordan Lake. This was a NetGalley e-arc that I received for free in exchange for an honest review and by this point you might, I might have already posted the review. If I have I'll link it down in the comments. I'm not going to talk a lot about it now because I go into all my thoughts in that review so you can go and check that out if you want to know more of what I think about that. Under a Gilded Moon I gave three stars to but as I say, if you want more of my thoughts, go check out that review. Next was a reread for me. I reread The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is the first book in the Wayfarer series and it was our Space Sirens book club pick for January. I really love this series. The fourth book has just come out and so I had thought about rereading all of the series before the final one came out and then it, the first one was picked as our Space Sirens book club pick so that gave me a good opportunity to reread them. Yeah I loved this book as much as the first time I read it. I will link the live show for this so you can hear more of the Space Sirens thoughts. I wasn't able to actually take part in the live show but I was watching and commenting as it was 
going on. I just couldn't be on camera that day. So I will link that if you want to know more of our thoughts from The Space Sirens. Yeah, just I really, really love that book. I love the series. I'm not quite ready for it to be over, which is probably another of the reasons why I decided to reread them all before reading the new one. Okay, so then I read The Guernsey Literary and Potato Pill Pie Society by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This one I was, yeah, not really sure what I wanted to pick up after rereading Becky Chambers and I was talking to a friend about it and I gave her a list of a couple of books I was thinking about and she was like okay you have to read Guernsey because it's one of her all-time favourite books and so I did and I completely understand why she loved it so much. I am planning to do a page picture review of this. The same friend and I have been meaning to watch the film but I wanted to read the book first and she loves the book so much that she's been a bit intimidated to watch the film and to see how it's adapted because so much of the charm of the book is in the way that it's written is in, I can never say this word, epistolary form? It's written as letters um, and like one of the central characters is someone that you don't actually meet in the book, you just meet her through the way that other people describe her. I'm curious to see how they managed to do that as a film but also reluctant to watch it in case it doesn't come off very well. So at some point I will be hopefully doing a page to picture review of that book but it's just really charming. It's about a young woman who's a writer and she has become quite a popular writer during the Second World War because she has been writing kind of wartime diaries almost and so she's looking for her next project and starts correspondence with a group on Guernsey, a book group and just all the characters are just so lovable and yeah so I thought it was really fun and I gave it five stars. The next book that I finished was Desires Become Demons, a collection of poetry from four different Tamil poets and that was translated and edited by Mina Kandasamy. So she translated some of the works and someone else translated some of the others, I can't remember the names unfortunately because I don't have the book with me. So yeah I really enjoyed this as well, I gave this four stars, it was a really interesting insight into Tamil culture, into feminism in India because there was in the introduction it talked about how there's different levels of feminism in the different castes and so kind of there's been a fight for equality not just in terms of gender equality but also in terms of caste equality and like some feminists have traditionally been only fighting for the freedom of their own particular caste so it was really interesting and this is one of the reasons why I'm trying to read more translated fiction again this year not just fiction translated works in general because you get such an insight into a different culture in a way that I don't think you necessarily do if the person is writing in English compared to writing in their own tongue if that makes sense. Yeah I really really enjoyed that and I do really recommend the publisher is called Tilted Axis and they publish short collections of poetry and different things from different cultures around the world things that wouldn't necessarily get translated into English so they're a really great small publisher to support. The next book I finished was Black and British and Forgotten History by David Olusoga. So I had started reading this as an ebook from the library. I managed to get a hard copy when the libraries were briefly open at the end of December before they shut again in the next lockdown and actually it really helped. It was taking me a really long time to get through it as an ebook. I just found it a bit hard going and I read it much more quickly when I had the physical copy to pick up. Also there are some photo inserts in the in the physical copy that weren't in the ebook so I'm really glad I was able to see those because they gave extra context to some of the stuff he was talking about. This was fascinating, it starts with Roman Britain and moves all the way through 2000 years of history highlighting the stories of black people both in Britain particularly but also in Africa and in America and the way that Britain's colonial history links to those other nations, those other continents particularly because history is not just like one country in isolation and so I think this is a really important book for everyone to read if you want to know more about British history and how racism and different cultures fit into that. I found this really a brilliant insight into that. The next book I finished was On Job by Gustavo Gutierrez. Gustavo Gutierrez, he's an important figure in liberation theology which is a branch of theology that I find really fascinating. It's to do with freedom from oppression for all peoples and focuses on how God has this over abiding love for the poor and the oppressed and that true theology, true Christianity should be working to free people from anything that is keeping them oppressed. So this is his reflections on the book of Job from the Bible. Um, it's a book in the Bible that I really love and this was a really interesting look at that book and I found it really good. I've been wanting to pick this up for ages because when I did my MA in theology we looked at some excerpts from it but I'd never been able to get my hands on a copy because it's out of print and then I came here and it was in the college library so I managed to get it out and finally have 
read it and really enjoyed it and actually while I wasn't reading it specifically for an essay some of the stuff in it I think will help me with a couple of my essays that are coming up so yes really really enjoyed this book. I've not been saying all my star ratings for all of these books have I? Yeah so Black and British I gave five stars this one I also gave five stars. The next book I finished was A Rhythm of Prayer edited by Sarah Bessie. I had this as an e-arc from NetGalley as I already said but I enjoyed it so much that I ended up buying a copy. It's just come out. I wrote a full review for this on my blog which is linked in the description box so if you want to check out more of my thoughts I will also be doing a video review for this and another book a double review that I've just finished reading on NetGalley but I haven't had time to quite to gather my thoughts on it yet but they're of a similar genre and style so that will be coming up soon if you want to know more of my thoughts look out for that coming soon or, or go and check out the blog. The final book that I read in January was an autobiography by Agatha Christie and that, that does what it says on the tin it's her it was more a memoir really or it felt more like a memoir than an autobiography because of the way memory works she focused on certain parts of her story more than others and I really love her book so it was a really interesting insight into her as an author as a person like she never really intended to become an author and even when she started publishing books it was just like oh I'm just doing this for fun and then eventually she became really popular and realized that actually she was a writer but it took her a really long time to see herself as a writer and I thought that was also <laughs> really fun. If you are interested in Agatha Christie as an author I do really recommend reading that book but maybe when you've read quite a few of her mysteries because a couple particularly some of the earlier books some of the information she gives about them is a little bit spoilery so certainly read some of her earlier books particularly I'd say The Murder of Roger Ackroyd and The Mysterious Affair of Styles. I think there are some quite big spoilers for the plots of those books so make sure you've read at least some of her early mysteries before you head into the autobiography if you don't want those mysteries spoiled for you. And that was a very quick run through of all of the books that I read in January as I usually do in my stats video even though I've gone through all of these videos I'll just very quickly say my least favourite book of the month was probably Risky Business and my favourite book was probably my reread of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet although it was very difficult to pick because I gave five books five stars so I really enjoyed a lot of my reading in January it was a good reading month. I think that's all I've got to say about those books for now so yeah let me know some of what you've been reading recently have a chat to me down in the comments about some books that you've been enjoying um, or if you can't think of anything to say you can drop me an emoji I'm just trying to think of what kind drop me a flag emoji of a country where you'd like to read a book that's set there or you'd like to go there on holiday when we're allowed to travel again. If you if you can't think of a comment then yeah leave me a flag in the comments. You can also follow me on my social media that information's all listed in the description box for you so I'm on Twitter and I'm on Goodreads and I'm on Instagram and I'm also on Storygraph but I can't figure out how to link that for you at the moment I'm sure I'll work out eventually but go and look for me on those places. I'm Kerry Louise Reads on Twitter, Goodreads and Storygraph and I'm I think I'm just Kerry Louise on Goodreads. Anyway go and follow look for the links for those and please also like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and that's it for today so I'm going to say thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!